needs. So the big thing with this is how many people have their ECGs set up with the dots already on their leads before they attach it to their patient? Sometimes. Sometimes. So recommendation is we always place the dots on first before we attach the leads on. And this is for an accuracy perspective. So sometimes you can just grab the wrong lead, put it on the wrong one. Whereas if you're physically counting out the zones, when you grab the lead, you have to physically look at the area that you're putting it on and it kind of double catches you so that you don't put the wrong lead on the wrong limb. Okay. The other thing with that is, is when you end up putting leads that are connected to the electrodes, sometimes you have issues with the amount of give that's on your leads, as well as how well it fixates on the chest. Okay. Which means when the patient breathes or moves now, that lead can actually move off and it doesn't give you a clean reading. So the big recommendation is we always put our dots on first and then we connect our leads to them. Okay, and I know a lot of places to save time, they just connect all their dots to their leads and then they basically just grab it and pop it on. So just be aware of that as well. So then we inform the patient to stay still and breathe normally. Okay, this is very important because a lot of people think, take a deep breath in, hold your breath because they think that they're gonna stay still when they do that. Okay, and I'll let you know when you can breathe normally again. Have we heard anyone say that before doing an ECG? No? Okay. I've heard people saying that before. All right. And the big thing with breathing normally is if I take a deep breath in and hold my breath, okay, that can actually change my ECG rhythm. It actually does it with me because I have something known as sinus arrhythmia. Okay. So it's a normal sinus rhythm, but based on my breathing pattern, my rhythm actually becomes irregular and regular. It's nothing dangerous. It's just a normal occurrence with my body. Right. It's based on a lot of pressure differentials. So if I take a breath in, I rise intrathoracic pressure within my chest, which means that my heart can't fill as well, okay? My heart can't fill as well, I can't pump as much blood out, which means my heart compensates and speeds up the rhythm. And then when I breathe out again, my pressure goes back down to normal, which means my heart feels brilliantly. And my heart goes, great, I don't need to pump as hard because now for every pump that I get, I'm getting more volume out so I can slow my heart rate down. So if you put me on an ECG and you told me take a deep breath in and hold, what you will end up seeing occurring with my heart rate is you will see it speeding up and then when I breathe out, you will see it slowing down again. So you can actually cause an irregular heartbeat for your patient by getting them to do that. Okay, so just be aware of that. Just get them to stay still, breathe normally. And I always tell them, you know, while it's going, we just need to not be chatting because it causes static on the ECG. So I'll tell you when you can move and talk again. Okay. So then we record the ECG and we ensure that all the leads have been recorded clearly. And then we disconnect your ECG, remove your ECG electrodes and ensure that the patient is comfortable prior to leaving the room. So when we talk about where we connect these ECG dots to, okay, where do we start? So when, if you were walking in doing an ECG, what's the first spot that you will generally start on? Chest. Yep, so some people start limbs, some people start chest, okay? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you place the leads as long as they're all there when you finish your, when you're about to start your ECG. Okay, so the image that we normally have on here is, is people will either start putting their limb leads on or they will go straight to their fourth intercostal space. Out of interest, where do you start measuring your intercostal spaces from? Clavicle? Below the clavicle? Or here? Across. Good, so when we look at where your intercostal spaces are, if you're not measuring from the mid-clavicular line, okay, you miss the first intercostal space, which sits right under your clavicle. So people often overestimate where the fourth intercostal space is if they start from here, because when they feel down, they go one, two, three, four, right? And they're actually sitting at the fifth intercostal space because they've missed their first intercostal space through their clavicles. So always start from mid-clavicular line, first intercostal, second, third, fourth, and then track across to your sternal border, okay? The other thing that people sometimes use is the angle of Louis, 
right? So I hate using this method because it hurts when I do it on me. So I don't like doing it on other people as well. But when you start feeling down through here, you can actually feel a notch change occurring. Okay, and that's usually in line with your second intercostal space. And then you can count them down from there. So easiest method is clavicular line feel for the first intercostal space, work your way down to your fourth <coughs> intercostal space, then track your way across. Okay, because there's a risk of missing your first intercostal space if you go straight from the sternal border. Okay?